in just 72 hours. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, the countdown to chaos begins, and I want you to understand why the political elites are going to be panicking over this, because we're in a position where some very major power players are making some extremely calculated moves that could cause the economy to grind to a halt. And for the current administration, who continues to tout the success of our economy, the timing of this could not be worse. Plow, if you're also wondering what we're doing in the United Arab Emirates today, well, we're on the hunt for dollars. Let's over to Bloomberg where we picked today's story up on the headline. United Auto Workers call unprecedented strike at all three Detroit automakers. Now you think about the timing of this in terms of what it means for the broad economy because it's one thing for employees to band together and seek higher wages and greater compensation during periods where inflation is high and corporate profits are also high. It's another thing for all the other industries that feed into these companies that provide, of course, tooling and parts and all the things needed to make automobiles, well, they don't have the same luxury. So what you start to see is a ripple effect form. The longer you see these unions negotiating and worker stoppage happening, well, the rest of the economy falls on its knees at the wrong time, as you're about to see. After the midnight deadline for a new contract passed, workers walked out on a Ford Motor Company plant in Michigan that makes Broncos a General Motors factory in Missouri that assembles the Chevrolet Colorado pickups and a Salandis plant in Ohio that builds the Jeep Wrangler. The union and the automakers are still far apart after weeks of talks. So here we can already see the signs for the economy that all the peripheral companies that feed in to the manufacture of automobiles and the support of that industry, they're facing all of a sudden an instantaneous stoppage of worker. But what they don't have is of course the financial resources to weather a long strike, and that is the move here. And so what you're gonna see is some political elites are going to quickly step in to try to squelch this as fast as possible. Because again, you have to remember, the broad view here is the US economy is booming, but what we already know by the data, it's slowing down, and this is not gonna help. At the White House on Friday, President Joe Biden said he is sending acting Labor Secretary Julie Su and the White House advisor Gene Sperling to Detroit to, quote, offer their full support for the parties reaching a contract. And you bet he's got to do that because here we're facing already the resumption of student loan payments starting next month. And here's a time where there's going to be families that we already know, based on the data back in June, that are struggling to make ends meet. We now have new data showing that there's companies that are on the edge as well and the timing of this just does not look good at all and biden said the u.s auto companies have not shared their record profits fairly with union members but hope they could quote forge a win-win agreement likely as quickly as possible meanwhile gm chief executive officer mary barra voiced her frustration over the strike in an interview recently saying her latest offer was the best in the company's 115 year period she said i'm extremely disappointed and frustrated that the strike didn't need to happen but what's going to happen next is it's going to affect americans all across the country and not just those who want to buy a vehicle those who are dependent on the auto industry for the survival of their company and their families the uaw's three-pronged attack comes amid a resurgence of labor activism in the u.s emboldened by tight labor markets and agitated by inflation and risk shoulder during the pandemic unionized workers have notched a series of victories in the last year against some of the most prominent u.s companies including ups and the railroads and this is exactly what they should be doing during periods of high inflation and record corporate profits this is the move they should be making so you start to look back to the pandemic and you see all this money borrowed by the government flooded into the economy it creates a big surge of inflation a big surge in profits and of course now labor is making the right move at the right time because these companies have no choice but the question is, are these record profits going to last? Well, those investing in the stock market believe it will. But according to the latest data, at least based on the inflation data, it says not really, not at all. 
And here you can see the consumer price index in blue shown on a year over year rate change against corporate profits after tax that's shown in blue. And what do we know that the consumer price index is indeed an outstanding proxy of supply and demand. So when demand slows down, as we're seeing by decline in the consumer price index, typically what we see is a slowdown or decline in corporate profits. The steeper the decline in consumer price index the bigger the decline in profits and of course once all these contracts get set in and demand goes down of course then what's going to happen with these companies what are they going to do next well they're going to lay people off it's always the move it happens every time the effects of the strike could ripple across the economy with parts suppliers expected to be hit as production comes to a halt at three plants and then potentially others. Small and medium-sized manufacturers across the country will feel the brunt of this work stoppage, whether they a union shop or not. And the bigger problem is a lot of these small and mid-sized manufacturers, they don't have large pools of money to sit, that they're sitting on to handle a downturn. And you think about this for now, the banking perspective, let's say they wanted to go to the bank and borrow some money to get through this period of difficulty knowing that as soon as the strike's over the work is back well banks as we already know they don't want to lend and so that puts a lot of these small and mid-sized businesses at a point where they too could soon fail if the strike isn't ended quickly but nevertheless what we're continuing to see is demand for the economy or at least have the appearance of the global economy surge higher as oil edges closer to 95 a barrel as the global market tightens up, suggesting that the global economy perhaps is rebounding here. And we've long argued that the oil market would be increasingly tight the second half of 2023. That tightening's now arrived, and, and you're now only seems a matter of time before we test $100 a barrel. So this is a bad thing for a slowing economy. The last thing you want to see in a slowing global economy that's dealing with inflation is high energy prices because we know that will put upward pressure on consumer prices. The other factor here is that consumers, they still need energy. Businesses still need energy and the price of that now goes up means their ability to spend on other things is going down. But one thing that should be going up is your trading account. Let's take a follow up look here at our call on crude oil. Remember we told you the machines generally make the move first. We picked this up way down here. Then it's we had you showed you how the machines were selling out here and then on the rally back it said look jump on this gap up at open that trade is up 10 percent now and you just saw the news saying look we think it's going to 100 and that's why the machines are so important to add to your trading regime because they look at what's going on we run a historical overlay and when they move the market everyone falls in as you can see here back on august 31st we saw a reversal our machines started saying our positioning said hey they're moving up that is the indicator and then here you can see on september 4th max long across the board and as i said before everyone would follow suit and now you're seeing it you too can get access to this report it's a mere 30 bucks a month and comes with a 14 day money back guarantee check out the description below because wow let's head over to the uae where we're on the hunt for dollars as hedge funds turn bullish on the dollar before a key Fed meeting. Now, the key part here to understand is you start looking at the U.S. economy. We're seeing, of course, the manufacturing sector that we've looked at articles showing a bit of a revival, but with this UAW strike that puts it at risk, particularly the small and mid-sized suppliers to those big companies. But what is a big headwind in terms of manufacturing here in the U.S.? It's a strong dollar. As the dollar goes higher, then, of course, people looking to have things manufactured manufactured will turn to other places around the world and what we're seeing now is again a perfect storm for the u.s economy slow down here in the uaw in the manufacturing sector and now a strong dollar on top of high oil prices there's no doubt of why we're seeing panic at the highest levels of the current administration and here you can see, of course, that you, with the U.S. data remaining relatively strong, we believe the dollar rally will continue. Again, bad news for the U.S. economy as we expect a hawkish hold from the Fed this week that leaves a door open for further tightening. And on the other hand, virtually every other major central bank that's mean this week is expected to fall in the ECB's footsteps and hike rates at least 25 basis points while signaling the peak is near. Of course, there's no way Powell will signal the peak is near. We know that's not in his repertoire 
right now, but the belief is that the Fed controls the dollar and they don't. I'll show you what actually controls the dollar. Here you can see the federal fund rate against the nominal broad U.S. dollar index. The belief when the Fed raises rates, the dollar gets stronger. But here we can look in the past to see the Fed raising rates. And, well, the dollar got weaker. Here we can see the Fed raising rates and the dollar went sideways. And the Fed's raising rates and the dollar kind of went up marginally. This is all about traders now. But really what drives a currency is supply and demand for it, as you'll soon see. Investors have been turning more positive on the dollar over the past seven weeks after they've held the biggest net short against the greenback in more than two years at the end of July. The shift has taken place as a resilient U.S. economy boosted the potential that Fed officials will stick with forecasts for at least one more rate hike this year. So now, now we're seeing kind of the move. Everyone kind of buys into this view that the Fed somehow controls the dollar, but it doesn't. Demand for currencies have to do everything with global trade including the dollar so how do we get more dollars created well when global trade expands and that means we have to look at the export data and suddenly it starts to make sense why these traders are going to be on the right side of this trade but for all the wrong reasons and here you can see the exports of goods and services this shown on a year-over-year -year rate of change and as you see exports growing notably the dollars declining because as exports grow more dollars are indeed created we see that here again around 2009 and going into 2012 we notice that exports are moving up dollar is weakening makes perfect sense here we see it again around you know 2017 into 2018 exports start to pick up the dollar weakens so what we can know here is as exports contract well that means fewer dollars are created and demand for the current amount of dollars in the system goes up particularly when you start to see delinquencies and defaults is telling you there indeed is a dollar shortage and of course the uaw well they know that too but they're not saying that's the reason why they're buying it they give us a different reason but we know the truth that is their short dollars and they need a bunch of them as UAE is to sell dollar bonds for the first time since June of 2022, they're said to raise about a billion dollars here, and that means they have to pay that loan back in dollars as well. The old rich Persian Gulf nation plans to sell dollar denominated bonds with a 10 year tenor, and the initial price is said to be about 85 basis points over Treasury and expected to price out today. The government wants to raise $1 billion through the sale. Now, if you think about how does the UAW or UAW UAE, not UAW, get, uh, get dollars? Well, they get it through global trade, through selling oil. So if they think they need dollars right now, what does that mean? That suggests that the price of oil to them is too high, is going to curb demand. And sure enough, we see that in the relationship with crude oil and the nominal broad dollar index. So here you see the dollar in red, crude oil prices shown in dollars per barrel in blue. And sure enough, as we know, normally crude oil goes up, the dollar goes down and now the problem they have is if the uaw thinks that crude oil is indeed going up why would they buy dollars it would be a poor investment they actually probably believe the dollar's going down in value so they want to get our dollars going up in value so they want to get dollars now before oil prices go down and that's the key so what we're seeing here is they're looking to get dollars as it goes higher they'll sell those dollars later and probably buy other things with them again validating kind of what we know about the economy here is the u.s economy is going to slow down when we see all of these effects and now we're looking to the political elites who are making perhaps a very key move here that's sending panic all the way as they started the show to the highest levels of the current administration as McCarthy demands 8% spending cut in border wall to avert the shutdown, and now the showdown begins because this indeed could add on to the UAW strike. You see a government shutdown, and that means people aren't getting paid. You've got the student loan repayments back. You've got the Fed still on a hiking cycle, driving up those minimum payments on the credit cards. We know consumers are now running out of pandemic stimulus. You talk about the worst possible timing, but perhaps depends on what side of the fence you're actually on here if you're in the current administration you don't want to see it if you're a republican you're thinking you might be able to get an easy win here 
As McCarthy presented the plan to Republican lawmakers in a conference call on Sunday evening after negotiators representing key factions within the House GOP still on demands to temporarily fund the government for 31 days. The House vote is planned for Thursday, about 72 hours from now. The demands would also include provisions for curtailing the ability of migrants to claim asylum in the U.S. Well, that's an issue Democrats in the Senate aren't likely to support. And that means the bill doesn't reduce the risk of a shutdown. And again, you look at the political move here and you see this is pretty smart play that everything else is now kind of starting to move against the current administration. You want to get things like budget cut back here. We see there's lots of Treasury securities being issued. You see interest rates up. And so what would be the smart play is to bring, of course, the deficit spending down, issue less debt, and that means perhaps interest rates would come down as people still had a demand for treasuries, but the belief being that maybe we're issuing too many of them. So you look at the move here and you say, hey, the timing of this, depending on what side of the fence you're on, looks really good. But for the economy, if we have a shutdown, it's going to look bad. And I want to make sure we don't shut down, McCarthy said on Fox News. Of course he doesn't. I don't think that's a win for the American public, and it absolutely is not. I definitely believe it makes our hand weaker if we shut down, putting the pressure on the current administration to actually bow to the demands, of course, of the Republican House. It also heightens the risk of a double barrel shutdown. First in October, standoff focused on immigration policy demands to open up about a month of funding for the government, then more fiscal showdowns as soon as November that wrap up in conflicts over federal spending before Congress approves the annual funding for the government. So again, you look at the timing of all of this, and as I started to show, it's absolutely terrible because everyone thinks the U.S. economy is going to boom here, and all of a sudden, it could just grind right to a halt based on all of these scenarios coming together all at once. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.